Hello everybody, it's me, I'm in my kitchen. All my stuff's behind me here. Um, I thought I would just sit and drink this coffee. This coffee cashew latte thing. And um, I haven't done a video like this where I just like sit and talk about what's been going on. And I think in one of my last What I Ate In A Day videos, I, would, I was alluding to the fact that I was gonna talk about Mike Dooley and Lorna Byrne because I went to a Mike Dooley Lorna Byrne workshop. This goes back now to uh, like September that I went. Anyway, so I thought I would just come here and talk and see where it all leads. But um, yeah, it's been an awesome couple of months and I don't know if I'll do another video like this before the end of the year. So I'll give you all the updates and everything here too. Um, if you've been listening to the podcast that I've been on lately, you can go to my Instagram at Lauren Toyota and I've um, highlighted all the podcasts I've been on in a little highlight so you can listen to them all. Um, there's Jessica Renee's from a while back. There's Manifest This Twice. There's Chloe's Countertop. The reroute, the reroute one with Eamon and Beck. Um, a bunch. So I've announced a lot of information and talked about things I think more in depth than I really have on YouTube in a lot of those podcasts. So you should go listen to those. If it's not out already, I was also on Forked Up, which is the Thug Kitchen podcast. And I went and met Michelle and Matt um, to do that when I was in LA. I went to LA um, the beginning of November. And yeah, that was awesome. So if it's not up, it will be up. If it's up, go listen to it. It was super fun. They wanted to talk about the breakup and all that stuff because they've also done that. And what's interesting is that I wanted to find my phone in case I needed to talk about something. <coughs> I can't seem to find my phone though. Found it. Also, I got a new phone. <laughs> new case, new phone. Who this? Um, it's the iPhone XS. Not sponsored. They'll never give free phones away. Anyway, what I was going to say is what was interesting about talking with Michelle and Matt about my breakup with John on the podcast so candidly is that by the time that came around to do that, I was like really ready to do that and I hadn't been before. I think when you saw some of my other What I Ate In A Days, like those were recorded a month before they actually aired and so a lot has happened since then and a lot has developed since then and a lot uh, of letting go and healing has happened since then. So. I'm in a way better place and uh, yeah, that's all I'll say. Go listen to the Thug Kitchen podcast, but like I never really imagined that I would talk about that publicly, but it's felt like the right time and the right place to do it and it doesn't bother me at all now. Whereas before I could not even have said anything. So, progress. Um, yeah, so in September I went to I think it was called Talking to Your Angels. It was a workshop with Mike Dooley and Lorna Byrne. Now Mike Dooley, someone I've talked about a lot on here because he's the first person that I ever read or had encountered who talked about the law of attraction. And he always says the thoughts become things. So that was my first introduction to him a few years ago <clears throat> and kind of how I started getting on board with that language and then Abraham came after that. So when I knew he was coming to town for a workshop, I think because I follow him on Instagram and I saw he had tour dates and he was coming to Toronto, I was like, I'm going. Without fully realizing that this was a talking to your angels workshop with Lorna Byrne. And I didn't know who Lorna Byrne was, but I was like, I'm gonna go regardless. He'll talk about his stuff, the way he talks about his stuff. And it'll be like basically a Mike Dooley workshop. So I went by myself and um, it was in Toronto and it was an incredible day. Um, Lorna Byrne, is a healer, a teacher, I don't know what she calls herself, author. I'm a huge author and she talks to angels and she's basically seen angels since she was a baby. She would see angels the way she sees humans. So she gave her a whole background and I knew nothing about her. Um, and even, look, the idea of angels isn't something, it's not <clears throat> something I talk about or, or like have a, like I guess a reference for where I'm not always like, talking to my angels, talking to my angels. I'll say things like talking to my guides or getting guidance from spirit. She sees angels and they, they have distinct looks and things like this. And she explained what angels were. She said that angels are, I mean, if you read any of her books or anything online, you can learn about this, but um, you know, there are like Archangel Michael and things that you may have heard words like that in meditations and stuff. Um, but there's also different types of angels. And she broke that down. She talked about how there are 
are angels that you have like a, an angel guardian angel and she was like picking people out of the audience and like telling them what their guardian angel looked like and she had everybody like figure out their guardian angel names and stuff crap i don't remember mine i'd have to look at my journal but anyway um <laughs> i've done other guided meditations like that too before where you know you meet your spirit guides and stuff and i think my belief is that you have more than like one guide but she says you have one guardian angel and then you have these worker angels i think she's what she called them um that just want to be used and you can call upon them for anything like they just want to be used for tasks like busy bees and they're just there all the time she's like they're there all the time and they just like want a job and you can call upon them like i can't lift this help me lift this like um keep me safe while i'm driving or like whatever um and so she was pretty much encouraging people to just i mean what harm can it possibly do it might feel silly if you don't believe in this stuff or you have no reference for it at all but it's like what's the worst that could happen you'll be guided or you'll have some protection around you like if nothing else if you falsely or placebo in a way believe it then i don't think there's any harm in it so i thought it was really interesting just to kind of have a language about angels and have her describe her journey she was basically um considered she said the word retarded because back in the day people said that so she was considered retarded in school and was like sent to the back of the class and not paid attention to she learned everything she ever learned from angels she didn't know how to read or write she was dyslexic i think maybe she wasn't autistic but she was dyslexic i'm sorry if i'm getting any of this wrong i'm just pulling it from memory um and so she wasn't given any guidance or help in school she was just relegated to being like inept but she was meanwhile learning from angels and receiving all this information like as a child which is so cool and then of course she ended up being a published author she said the angels helped her write books because she didn't know how to read or write um so it's all kind of like channeled material from the angels um i think her best-selling book is called angels in my hair and she has another one called love from heaven i've never read them i don't even know if i will like i don't know if the the medium of angels is necessarily something like i want to dive deeper into but it was super useful and the thing with having mike dooley there is <clears throat> mike dooley talked about the synchronicity and them meeting and putting together this workshop and this tour and it was very synchronistic and magical of course and she was told by her angels to contact him and what was cool is they were both essentially talking and saying the same things and they broke the workshop down into like categories like finances love and relationships family career it's like the, the four or five main things everyone's whole life is concerned with right and then they were trying to address kind of you know he would apply everything under his lens of the law of attraction and thoughts becoming things and um kind of miracles and magic in the universe that's happening all the time but that you don't really know in, until hindsight um you know like you don't know until hindsight in your life that things turned out exactly the way they needed to and that everything was divinely planned and perfect so that's what he was explaining and talking about and then got the audience involved in terms of telling their own stories like that like where miracles have happened and taking what appear to be sort of dire traumatic awful situations things like people having cancer people being sexually abused by their father and children dying in car accidents like i'm talking about like the worst things you can think of people were getting up and telling their story their personal story and saying here's what i learned from these this event or here's what i learned from getting cancer or here's what i've learned from having my child die before me um and to have a room full of hundreds of people on that same vibration and sharing that perspective like that holy true big picture perspective and realizing that everything that does happen happens for them not to them and that it was all divinely intervened and timed for their benefit and to hear people talk about that out loud and know the exact reasons why was so powerful and obviously i and lots of people were crying because not out of sadness but like out of the fact that oh there's all there are all these other people who are seeing life from this higher perspective which is what we hope for everyone but not everyone's there yet and i think it was just nice and refreshing to be in a room like that for a day and like 
feel that vibe and be in that love and like know that this stuff is true because <clears throat> sometimes when you're alone talking about it or watching videos i don't ever doubt it now but i could see how you know there are still times when you're like well is all this bullshit like sometimes i do think that sometimes when i start going down like a bad rabbit hole thing but <clears throat> i don't really do that that much because i am really at a place where i like trust what is happening all the time and so it was just nice to go to that workshop and see all those examples and hear all those examples and really knowing that I was like at the right place at the right time and that I was meant to be at that workshop. And um, there was some interesting sort of synchronicities leading me there. Basically, I had seen one day I was hanging out with Nat. This was like back when it was summer and I saw that it was happening, the workshop, and I booked it right then and there. I bought a ticket. I knew I had to go. And then the next day, we were talking about some stuff, me, Natalie, and Lorena. I don't know what we were talking about, but we were getting into this conversation about how I think we were all a bit frustrated about some things going on in our lives. And I think we were talking about like Abraham and all, we always apply, you know, like what we know to everything that's going on with us when we're talking to each other. And I remember Nat saying something, or me or someone said like, you know, this is, life is like the matrix. Like it really is like the matrix. And you know, Abraham talks about the grid, which is kind of like the same thing as the matrix. And that you're kind of we were like we're playing the matrix like we're just playing this game like we don't need to take it so seriously like all of that stuff and then i had booked this ticket for mike dooley but i didn't know he had a new book out i have his other books infinite possibilities um and leveraging the universe which i've talked about before so i'll link them below if you have not seen that um and his new book what was it called when it popped up on my computer recommending me to purchase it because it knew I was going to Mike Dooley but I just thought the timing was weird it's like I didn't know his book was called playing the matrix I bought the ticket then we got into a conversation about how it feels like we're playing the matrix and we said those words and then I saw that his new book was called playing the matrix which I think is weird um so I'm reading that book right now playing the matrix it's mo pretty much the same stuff packaged a little differently um uh with imagery of this matrix so to speak um so you're really better off reading any of his books at this point his new one or his old ones they all cover the same exact things and processes and steps to creating your life and utilizing the law of attraction deliberately that's kind of it but i just wanted to share that with you there's been lots of other things i think my whole thing right now is like there's a lot of developments going on right now in my life and a lot of amazing things and I've mentioned this a few times in the past, but like for the moment, I'm just keeping things separate, you know? There's only so much I wanna share here. And again, I think it's all about timing and right now isn't the time to tell you about some other things, but I'm sure at some point I will because it's me and I can't keep my mouth closed. So, <laughs> I mean, my mouth shut, I mean, my lips sealed, but um, yeah. Everything's all good, better than good, magic, great, amazing. Um, and I'm just paying attention to all of the signs and all of the little clues and things and like really feel like it is a game and it is a matrix and I just have to like let go, go with the flow, do what I wanna do, you know, follow that little breadcrumb trail to wherever that leads and you know, right now I kind of don't know what my life's going to look like in 2019. I kind of have an idea, but I think I also feel this big sort of like impending greatness of something happening, like, or just something expanding or some kind of like growth or like leveling up, I guess, is what I've been saying over the last little while. Like, I just feel like who I was a year ago when the breakup happened till now i mean till even a few months ago till now is drastically different you know we talk about being trans tra transforming and you know life death life cycles and my whole life has been like that i think that's a very scorpio thing but it's just a very um if you're aware of it it's a very um common thing with everybody is that like nothing ever stays the same and everything's constantly changing and the only constant is change and i've just really i think harnessed that and embraced that this last year and i think i'm ready for more and i feel so much more relaxed and grounded into that and i truthfully wasn't before and i can see myself in that relationship before 
where I wasn't and I was just like sort of high strung and sort of anxious and sort of like trying to control and you know I am a control freak and I have control issues and I'm I'm aware of them I'm super aware of them and so I think I've let go of that a lot I'm easing more into things I'm allowing things better and more um but yeah when I think back I don't you know I don't know if it's visible through videos probably not hot for food videos but maybe the vlogs and stuff um because you've seen me traveling with friends and with Timmy versus like when I travel with John and whatnot and you know I don't go back and observe this behavior but I know when I think back like just everything is different obviously but I feel like I've changed and I oh what I meant to say is I feel like I have shed a skin like a snake like I just sort of feel reborn like I feel like certain habits and behavior has been reprogrammed to a degree and I'm just not at all in the same perspective or headspace that I was and you know I think it has to do with a lot of things I don't think it just has to do with with John but I think that a lot of my life mentally was consumed by John and a lot of my attachment was to John and I think that that was affecting me in maybe unhealthy-ish ways although the whole thing is in hindsight it's like you know that it was for the benefit of you and I think and I may have said this in Ashley's Manifest this podcast recently but it's just that I was who I was in that relationship so that I could learn how to undo those things it's like it only brought things to the surface to show me that those parts of me exist and then i can make a conscious choice about what i want to do with those things and so that's what relationships are for like not just intimate relationships but any encounter you're having is simply to teach you and i mean obviously all of my relationships have taught me things but not to the depth and degree that this one has and so that's why i feel kind of renewed and different and like i'm older like i just turned 36 in november at the beginning of november and i can like feel that i can like feel this change or this shift or this thing and i think i think it's a thing lifted it's a thing gone it's a thing shedded it's not anything that's like been added it's like a stripping away, like getting closer, hopefully, to like the point of me or like who I am or whatever. So yeah, it's been interesting. I think I've exposed uh, all that I need to via the vlogs here or these videos, but I also just wanted to kind of like talk and get it out a little bit. And hopefully I can share more things with you soon. Two more things before I leave. One um i will be posting hot for food videos uh every week in uh, december the four weeks in december till december 26th and i have a very special guest on the show december 26th on hot for food and this guest will also be on watch me eat we're gonna do two videos because this person is that special that i needed a lot of their time who could it be i don't know okay um and then I mean, you can guess in the comments. And then I'm taking January off. So there will be no hot for food content in January and there'll be no vlog content in January. Maybe one vlog because I'm going to Vegas with Timmy from December 20, 17th to the 21st. So maybe that vlog will come out the beginning of January or I'll save it till February because I don't want to work in January. So the whole point is I'm taking the time off, not posting content till February on both channels and on social i don't know i might have someone else post on social because here's the thing everyone's like you can't take january off what about the algorithm what about your ranking on youtube blah 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 and i like i really don't care like part of me got fearful for like two seconds and was like <gasps> you know because there's always that fear when you're on youtube that it's like oh my god no one will be there no one will watch and i'll be have no subscribers or views and it's like or someone else will race ahead and it's just like honestly who cares like you see all these youtubers talking about burnout and like that is going to happen to me if i don't take a freaking break and lily singh just recently is like i'm not going to go on youtube anymore and she needs a real break i mean that woman is like hardcore she posts a lot 
But even posting once a week on two channels is insane. And so anyways, I'm taking a break, but also because I'm going to a silent retreat in the middle of January. So there's really no point in trying to work around that because it's not gonna be helpful to the practice that I'm doing, but I'm going to a Vipassana retreat. It's a 10, really 12 day silent retreat. And so I'm going to that. So I've never not worked for any day in my life ever. Um, even when I say I'm on vacation and I'm not working, I'm still going on my phone, I'm still posting on social media, or I'm still shooting a vlog. And even prior to doing this business, even in television, I never had like real time off and I still would go on social. It's like, no, I'm gonna actually have my phone in the glove box of my car while I'm parked at the Vipassana retreat and I won't be able to access it for 12 days. And I can't journal and I can't talk to anybody. And I'll be meditating every day for like hours a day alone in a group, I have to wake up at 4 a.m. I don't get any coffee. I mean, can you hear how much I'm rambling right now? Like how on earth is Lauren Toyota gonna do a silent retreat for 12 days? What's gonna happen when I come back? I have no idea, but talk about transformation and shredding of something. Something's gonna happen. I don't know if it'll be as profound as some people make it sound. I think, you know, maybe it'll be very anticlimactic and life will go on, but obviously I'll realize certain things and I don't really even know what's gonna happen. So. I'm very curious. If anyone's done it, let me know your experience in the comments. If you're willing to share, you can always DM me. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I think it's something I need. It's again, kind of like a thing to take my meditation practice to that next level. Explore more of that, my internal world, which I'm trying to make more of a priority because I think that's how I can grow this business better. So not that my priority is my business, they go hand in hand, but I really need to focus on me and inside and my personal life in order to like give in this outward way. So that's what's happening. Hope you're all okay with that. I appreciate you watching and following along with this journey. And if you made it till the end, one last little tidbit of info that's so exciting in 2019, guess who's going to see Abraham? Lauren Toyota and Timothy Packron, AKA Mississippi Deacon. We are going on a trip to go see an Abraham workshop. Oh my God. God, and also another friend of mine's probably coming and Natalie might come and it's going to be crazy. And I'm totally gonna sit in the chair and ask a question. So when you go to listen to Abraham on YouTube, you'll be like, is that Lauren Toyota's voice asking that amazing question? <laughs> yeah, that's what's gonna happen. And then things will really level up. I mean, after being face to face in the room with Esther and all of the Abraham people, I mean, who even am I going to be in 2019? <laughs> but I hope you still follow along on the journey, on the adventure, and sh keep sharing. And um, love you all. I'm going to go now. Thank you for watching this long update and storytelling vlog. Um, leave questions below for any Ask Lauren's I could do in 2019 for you. And yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Bye.